let's let's move on here. We're gonna dive into the next segment, and that's gonna be on the players to watch. For this, I wanna I wanna have uh, us say our players like one at a time, and just really talk about each one that we think could make an impact, uh, and sort of open up the conversation about it. Uh, and I'm gonna have Sophie start. Uh, so for players to watch, I'm gonna go with Reed Lebster on this one. Um, Reed's coming off a like a very solid junior year. He played on the second line, was a staple on that second line. Um, UMass went through a lot of injuries last year, but he kind of remained that one kind of solid spot there on the offensive line. And the second line, I remember there were multiple nights where we were all a little like, it's that second line that's really pulling the game right now. Mm -hmm. um, and he was a large part, large part of that. Um, and of course his goal celebrations were <laughs> <laughs> unmatched. Um, no, I mean, he had a career high 18 points with nine goals and nine assists last year. So right there, um, hint, hint, I think he might be the scoring champion, but that's for a later segment. Yeah, um, for sure. For sure. I, I <laughs> yeah, but I'm not saying that now. Um, saving that one for the next part. Uh, no, I, I think that he's definitely going to be someone people are going to want to watch out for and, Again, you also, with such a new team, he's kind of that one, he's one of those few guys on there that are coming back that know the culture of UMass hockey and that, you know, we know how he plays. Yeah, Reed is, I think, one of the guys with, like, the biggest upside on the team. Like, his, I don't think people have gotten to see it on full display, at least not mm -hmm. consistently, but he is such a good offensive player, so underrated in the offensive zone. He can make some plays that there are not many people on this team that can make. Uh, and if he has a breakout season, like, he could do incredible yeah. things for them. He could wind up being the scoring champion. Like, I, I definitely could see that happening. Like, he's – and Carve has talked about him to me for the last, like, two years of, like, just waiting to see what he can do. And sometimes he needs to light a fire under him. He's one of those kind of guys that, that needs a spark occasionally. But his upside is so through the roof that I just think that he could wind up being one of their best forwards this year for sure. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, okay. So um, I generally I went so back and forth with who to pick, but I'm choosing Taylor McCarr. I think Taylor last year, you know, he he only scored one goal and he did spend a lot of time in the penalty box, but I think this year he's going to definitely want to prove himself a lot more. Um, I think he's definitely going to still be physical, but hopefully it doesn't end end him up in the penalty box. Um, just even even just seeing like with his brother's success at UMass, I think he's gonna want to kind of do the same thing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that again, when you talk about players with massive upside, like Taylor McCarr has massive upside, and we also talked about hunger earlier. Like Taylor McCarr just watched his brother win a Stanley Cup, <laughs> and he got to stand on the ice and watch his brother hoist the Stanley Cup, and he didn't even want to touch it because he might play in the NHL in the future. Obviously, drafted by the Avalanche, could play with his brother in the future. Like, I don't, like, obviously I'll never know how motivating that is inside the mind, but I imagine it must be super motivating to be standing on the ice and watching that happen and being like, this could be me. Like, I imagine that he probably was already working hard this offseason. Looking at that probably, like, took it even to the next level. Like, he's, I could really see him, like, coming into his own this season and being, the person that people expect, well, I shouldn't say that. He's never going to be the person that you all expect when you're looking at his name on the back of the jersey. <laughs> and I think it's unhealthy to make that comparison uh, to Kale McCarr, who's literally one of the best NHL players in the world right now. One of the best hockey players in the world right now could go down like greatness factor top 10. Like, Kale McCarr is that good. And I don't think it's really that fair to have all these lofty expectations for Taylor or anybody in college just based on the name on the back of their jersey. But I really think that he's going to come into his own, and I think he's going to be such a good player this season. I think that's a really good pick. I think last year it was his freshman season. It's all new to him. And you also have to remember that everyone's expecting something out of him. It's not healthy, but they were. And it's going to take him time to adjust to playing at UMass and playing with those expectations, you know, having to, you know, kind of in a way ignore them, which – I don't think I could do <laughs> if I was hearing that constantly. So I give him credit. Um, but I also want to throw out there, his only goal last season, while it was only one, was a pretty major goal. It was against UMass Lowell on January 30th um, earlier this year. And he scored the equalizer against them uh, in that third uh, period. Mm -hmm. And then it was Scott Morrow who eventually got the go-ahead. 
goal to win it. But he got that equalizer, and it was a moment when I think a lot of people kind of took a step back because mm-hmm. he, had, he had been quiet. He wasn't a s- solid fixture in the lineup all year. And then he comes in, he scores that goal. So mm-hmm. wouldn't count him out just yet. <laughs> and that was after he got a goal already called back. Like, oh, was that was so that right? He was really that scored twice in that game. like that. And I forgot to that be able to bounce game. back from that and then score again, have your first career yeah. goal back on the same day, like that was huge for I – th- I think that was huge for his confidence. Uh, I think that I, I'm between two people right now for my player to watch, but I'm going to uh, – my gut is telling me that we have to watch Jerry Harding. And the reason that I say that is he was voted an assistant captain. That is a team vote thing. Carville and the assistant coaches also get votes. But, like, if that team has – if the team has that much faith in Jerry Harding, then I have to imagine that something is going to be happening on the ice this year. He could obviously fall into more of that Jake Odette role where his numbers don't jump out a little bit, but his leadership and his physicality does. Uh, but you're talking about a guy who has, like, one of the worst stories. He had to miss the national championship game because he had COVID. Like, he he did not travel to the Frozen Four, and uh, Carson Jasevich and Philip Lindbergh came back for the final game. They missed the semifinal game, and they came back for the final, but he was not allowed to. Like, he had to wait and celebrate when everybody got home. Like, that was so heartbreaking to me, and he hasn't been, like, ever a super main fixture of the lineup. He ended up on the fourth line last year for most of it. Uh, He hasn't been, like, that guy that jumps out to you, but something in my gut is telling me that Jerry Harding is a guy that we have to look out for, especially because of the A on his chest. Like, I think that that speaks volumes to how who he is as a person and how much faith the team has in him. I think that that's going to be a confidence booster for him, and I think that he could really turn a lot of heads this year as like an out of nowhere pick. I think that con- I think you're right on with confidence there. Like getting that, you know, he wasn't, you know, again, he wasn't someone last year that you're looking at the offense. You're like, oh yeah, Jerry Harding right there. Like that's that's the offense right there. So, but he's got that A on his chest. It's confidence that the team believes in him, and that the team is like this guy can do it. So there's, they're clearly seeing something that the public hasn't quite seen yet, that we haven't quite seen yet. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's going to make for – it's going to add to that mystery that we're, we've all been talking about, and it's going to make for an interesting year. Ever mm-hmm. since you said Jerry Harding, I think at the moment I just think back to his last year, his one goal in Hockey East is <laughs> forever my favorite moment, him throwing it from the net, not touching it, falling it down, and then the player putting <laughs> it in. So hopefully this year – he can have a goal where he actually touches the puck. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> I hopefully too. I can edit in a video of him doing that <laughs> on top of this because that was a funny moment. But it was like a goal that he so deserved. So I'm really <laughs> glad that it happened. Uh, it happened in the weirdest of ways. And thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah. But, Ever since you said his name, it just oh immediately my popped God. in my head. I did forget that. That's yeah. hilarious. He, he earned it though.